Hi there, I'm Graham Lewis and in this short video we're going to discuss how to find the interquartile range of these data sets, there's 12 numbers each, also why we would use it and talk about spread of data. So firstly I want you to look at A, the data set in A and the data set in B. They both have 12 numbers in them and they both um, are in order which is important. So because they're both in order we can easily work out the median. So let's go ahead and do that. So the median would, because we've got 12 numbers, we don't have a middle number, so we need to find the sixth number and the seventh number and uh, go halfway between them, don't we? So if we look at the sixth number, one, two, three, four, five, six numbers, 13, the seventh number's 15, so the median would be exactly halfway there. And for the second set, one, two, three, four, five, six, so it'd be halfway between 560 and 610. So we can see straight away that the median there for both sets of data, there's six numbers on the left and six numbers on the right halfway. So the median here would be 14, and the median here would be halfway between 516 and 610. That's a difference of 50, so 25 added to 560, so 585. Right, now, look at the two sets, and you can pause the video if you want. Which one of those two sets is more spread out? Pause the video and think about which data set is more spread out. Right, hopefully you've had a think about that. Most people, I've asked my classes, most 90% of people say B is more spread out. So B is more spread out, and the reason often is that apart from this one outlier here, A is very close together, whereas B has got big gaps and it seems more spread out. Uh, so most people say B. Don't worry if you said A, um, because I'm sure you've realized that the range, which is the max minus the min, doesn't really tell us anything, because the range for both sets of data is 1,010, minus 10, so the range is a 1,000 for both sets. So the range isn't really showing us the difference in the spread of the data. That's because the range gets upset by this outlier here, um, 1,010. Imagine if that was the million, uh, number a million. It would really get upset, wouldn't it? Because the range would be massive. So the range uh, only takes into account uh, the very biggest number and the very smallest. So if you've got a really, really big number or a really, really small number, it can get upset and doesn't illuminate differences in spread. So there's another way to measure spread, and that's what I'd like to show you. Now, the median is also called Q2 with a little 2 down there. That's a name. That stands for the second quartile because two quarters of the way up is, of course, a half of the way up. A half is two quarters. So Q2 is the second quartile. Now, I wonder how far a quarter of the way up the data would be. Now, we have 12 numbers. So if we split the numbers into quarters, we'd have three numbers, three numbers, three numbers, and three numbers. So it's fairly obvious that the first quartile would be there and the third quartile would be there. So this is the first quartile which is a quarter of the way up and this is the third quartile which is three quarters of the way up. You can see very clearly that we don't actually have a number at the third quartile. We have to go halfway between 10 and 11 so it would be 10.5 and we also don't have a number um, exactly three quarters of the way up. We'd have to go halfway between 15 and 16 so 15.5. So there we've got it and the interquartile range would be the distance between the third quartile and the first quartile. So in this example we've got the distance between Q3 and Q1. So for A the interquartile range IQR is the distance between Q3 and Q1 so if we go back Q3 was 15.5 and Q1 was 10.5 so we find the difference between 15.5 and 10.5 and that's an interquartile range of five. What is that? That's a new measurement of the spread of the data. Let's just have a look what that distance five is. We're saying here that this distance between the uh, third quartile and the first quartile, that distance there, sorry about my wonky line, is a distance of five. What we've done is we've ignored the top quarter of data, we've ignored the bottom quarter of data, and we found the distance in the middle half. So half of the data is in the middle there, 11, 12, 13, 15, 15, and 15, and the range of inside the quarters, the interquartile range, the range inside the quarters, the distance from Q3 to Q1 is 5. So this gets rid of the problem of outliers. Okay, so that 1,010 is not affecting it. We can see we've got a fairly small number 5 showing that the data is quite close together. The middle half of the data is quite close together. So that's a new spread. Let's do it for the second set, B. 
So again, we've got 12 numbers. So the interquartile range would be three numbers, three numbers, three numbers, three numbers, splitting it into quarters. So halfway between 180 and 300, the first quartile would be 190. Oops, sorry, that's a bad maths mistake, isn't it? The distance between 180 and 300 is, of course, 120. Half of that is 60. That's, of course, 240. My apologies which is uh, a foreign language for apologies. Um, and the third quartile there, of course, would be halfway between 800 and 900, so that's 850. So for set B, if I just scroll up a tiny bit, for set B, our IQR would be Q3 minus Q1. And, of course, the distance between the third quartile and the first quartile, the interquartile range, would be 850 minus 240 and that gives us uh, 800 minus 200 is 650 minus 40 is 610 so we get 610 so now we can see if we go back to our original question which of the data is more spread out well a had an interquartile range of 5 the IQR here was 5 and B had an IQR of what was it 610 yes yeah, 610 so we can see now we've got a mathematical measurement to actually support our gut reaction that it was actually more spread out B. B is a lot more spread out and we've got a mathematical measurement to show that's the case. So that's all the interquartile ranges. The range inside the quartiles, hence interquartile range. Now just some key notes here about it. Obviously uh, the IQR is a good measure of spread as it does not get upset by outliers. So now, remember your data has to be in order. If it's not in order, you have to put it in order to find the first quartile, second quartile and third quartile. Thank you very much for watching. There are ways to locate the quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3. Um, different books do it different ways. You can research that. There are ways to locate that. At this stage, I'm just asking you to find them just by looking and doing your best judgment. Thank you for watching. Hope that helped. Please give me any suggestions or comments and please watch some of my other videos. Thank you.